Hello everyone, I'm Professor Maryam Ladim from Mulesma University of Meknes. Well, my presentation is entitled Rethinking Education in Times of COVID-19 Pandemic in Morocco, Aspirations, Challenges and Horizons. Well, the plan of my presentation is as it follows. So I'm going to start by the background of the study, the methodology, number three, data analysis, number four, the findings, and finally, the conclusion with some references. Well, in 2017, my doctorate dissertation was about the integration of e-learning and online learning in Moroccan higher education system. So at that time, I faced many critics because of the choice of the topic. It was difficult for everyone to view that really one day online learning is going to take place 100% instead of face-to-face -face education because of many reasons at that time. But not very far, simply in 2020, the context has been available to such dreamy thoughts due to the expansion of the COVID-19 pandemic against our will, of course. So the coronavirus has turned the world upside down in a few months, if you can say in a couple of years. As being negatively affected, Morocco, like many other countries, has shifted to online learning to save the academic year of university students. The state of emergency imposed in the country has tried to make educators and students safe by teaching and learning from home and at home. Well, the current study explores the challenges facing this shift from on-site to online education. And of course, with the focus on the efforts conducted by the Moroccan Higher Education, uh, the Moroccan Ministry of Higher Education to make the transition smooth. The main objective of this study is to establish a strong floor for coming years to promote future pedagogies and to see quality of online education because um, basically we were simply improvising. To this end, an online questionnaire was administered at random to 250 students from different higher institutions all over Morocco using emails and social media, among which 216 were perfectly received, while 34 were remained uh, unanswered. Also, the sample consisted of 40 instructors randomly selected and they have received online semi-structured interviews through Facebook, LinkedIn, and their emails. The data were collected, classified, and analyzed using mixed methods of analysis. Well, as you can see, most of the respondents were males, representing 56 percent, while females represented 44 percent. The respondents' affiliations from al Akhawain University of Ifran, 44 students, 36 in Sidi Mohammed bin Abdullah of Fez, 41 from Mohammed V University of Rabat, 65 from Mulesma University of Meknes, and 30 from Qadiyya University of Marrakesh while the instructors, nine from al Akhawain University of Ifran, five from Sidi Muhammad bin Abdullah of Fez, seven from Muhammad V University of Rabat, 11 from Moulay Ismail University of Meknes, and eight respondents from Qadiyya University of Marrakesh. While studying the challenges facing students in their online learning, so, number one, I found that lack of network connection and bad network was one of the um, uh, difficult challenges facing students. Uh, at the second level, the lack of materials, because most of students could not afford laptops or even mobile phones to use for their online learning. 
at the third level, absence of suitable sitting to study because most of students were at home. So this situation of home might vary from one student to another and from rural to urban areas. Uh, at the fourth level, the lack of time. And at the fifth level, difficulty in using technology because most of students of students could not have some um, pertinent trainings to use the given technological tools. Uh, now you can see here the correlation between online courses and the tasks conducted from the period of March to June 2021. Now the time spent online was really extremely high in, in, in relation to the tasks conducted. So basically this study tended to uh, shed light on the difference between face-to-face uh, -face learning and online learning. And of course, the time conducted and the different activities which were conducted. Concerning the semi-interviews administered to instructors from different affiliations, the data recorded in the email transcripts were inductively coded within a grounded theory framework. Specifically, each email response was read repeatedly to gain a holistic understanding of the answers given by respondents, and key concepts identified through this process were inductively coded to form categories because basically my intention was to make the kind of comparison between how instructors and educators were teaching um, in face-to-face -face learning in comparison to online learning. Of course, at many levels, at the level of time, efforts conducted, techniques, um, even the performance of, uh, of students. The findings reveal several challenges that educators and students face related to the lack of precedent trainings or learning during crisis or epidemic times. So both teachers and students were improvising because we didn't have certain uh, precedent trainings to how can we deal with the learning in uh, the crisis or the epidemic time. However, the contributed efforts of all parts of society has succeeded to give good results at many levels. And the shift to online education in Morocco has approximately won over the backdrops of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we could say that we happily could save, between brackets, save the academic year but to how extent? That's the main question. Now, going back to the findings. Now, most of the challenges that I found um, after uh, coding and decoding, and of course, analyzing the semi interviews of um, the educators. Now, number one, most schools and higher educational institutions have had to reinvent new ways to cope with networking, especially when not all students and communities have access to online learning tools. So we had to change the tools to make them affordable for both students and uh, educators. Number two, stress disorders began affecting educators and students because of the emergency procedures which were imposed for more than two years. And even common people, not only educators and students, even common people are really feeling tired and people are uh, starting having this psychological burden over their shoulders so that people really wish to come back to real life, normal life, so this normal is no more normal. In some institutions, the class sizes are being reduced to increase physical distancing between students, and we resorted to uh, teach only 20 to 30 students in class, which means that more teachers will need to be employed. On the other side, 
teaching time has been reduced to offer quality of education. So instead of teaching um, four hours on site, we, for example, used to teach only two hours online. Not every learner has access to internet connection to include availability of gadgets and viable space for learning. So this is basically the main challenge, it's the main problem facing um, the online learning. Not only talking about uh, students, but even teachers, sometimes they don't have the internet connection to set their online courses. Not all teachers are armed with profound knowledge and skills in addressing the emergencies in distance education. And personally speaking, this is something that I had witnessed with my colleagues and um, it's the, the, the problems that you face once you are administering an online course. So those emergency, sometimes you cannot handle all of them. You need some technical support. You need some uh, previous training to deal with those situations, which, which is really um, the reality. Distance education should not disregard the humanness of the learners. And I think this is one of the biggest and the most important challenges in uh, the online learning which is this absence of humanness of the learning. So this, this human uh, relationship between this, the instructor, the educator, and the student, um, it affects a lot, uh, well, personally speaking, not only the performance of students, but even the performance of teachers. Um, it's like teaching robots, or it, it's like, um, how can I say? So this is something that is really you feel when you are teaching. Now, there is a great difference between online teaching and face-to-face -face, uh, learning. Um, it's something that you maybe you feel it more than you are aware of it. Uh, and finally, we can talk about the one-size-fits-all approach that to mitigate threat of education disruptions during pandemic, which is not suitable. So basically, once we talk about the online uh, education, there is one size fits all approach. When we are teaching 200 students using uh, Meet, for example, Google Meet or using a Zoom or so it's one approach that you are using to to teach different students to teach different minds different backgrounds and of course the results would not be um, uh, so uh, um, uh, effective if we can say many institutions faced issues with assessment in education when teaching moved from traditional modes to online education. So assessment has um, been really affected uh, with the pandemic situation. And the question was mainly, how can we assess our students? So according to the educators responses, some institutions have canceled national exams, while others held normal exams on site even with the, the, the pandemic situation. Others went through oral exams instead of written ones, and they administered that uh, on online, not on site. In some institutions, students were graded by teachers who predicted their performance based on the previous performances. So things were really different from institution to another, from city to another, and even from instructor to another. And that has really affected the performance uh, and the final results of most of students. Now, the disruptions and the lessons, which were really um, um, concluded from the online situation, uh, there are some technological disruptions. The challenges to educational system 
technology gaps in online learning, changes in, in learning modes, changes in techniques used. The common lesson is how people use ICTs and platforms, so that's the benefit. Concerning the economic disruptions, the lack of crucial resources, masks, sanitizers, new facilities. On the other side, the community collaboration between government to business to institutions, even to family and community. The social disruption, social distancing and segregation between people so that really has affected the absence of the human touch. On the other side, creating social support messages and activities in order to promote positive spirit and health knowledge. Concerning the political disruptions, pol politicizing the pandemic and creating political conflicts globally. On the other side, there were some partnerships built among many countries. The cultural disruption, culturally diverse responses to pandemic, and um, the on the other side, the grooming the culture of tolerance and even the benefit from other uh, countries. The learning disruptions, which is very important for us here. Now, the learning gaps and psychological barriers during school closure, change in learning modes, use of new technologies and new use of new techniques. On the other side, the use using uh, of these disruptions as good opportunities to make paradigm shift in learning with ecosystems to learn new techniques of education. So these, we can say, are the opportunities that we had from the COVID. However, on the other side, the challenges are more affecting. Well, to conclude, um, we can say that in the COVID-19 pandemic situation, distance education has become a viable option to address the current situation of bridging education where teachers and learners are geographically separated. So it was a big challenge for both learners and teachers to come to the same conclusion. The pandemic has taught us that families, communities, schools, and universities separated physically can network for shared resources and knowledge across geographical boundaries. This can be a positive impact to enhance the diversity of education and to make both communities and institutions common in the same goals. This study found out that there is a significant relationship between face-to-face -face communication with students and their academic performance, no matter what, no matter how, no matter when, no matter where we are talking about online, it has nothing to do with the face-to-face -face learning and the face-to-face -face touch and the face-to-face -face performance. There is a great deal of difference between both of them. Now, online education cannot replace all the functions schools play in our society, but it can do a lot more than being a lesser version of face-to-face -face schooling. We could say we could say that we really used online learning to save the academic year, year, but it has or it cannot replace everything that the real role of a human educator can do in face-to-face -face, um, real context. Well, the academic year 2021-2022 in Morocco has just started. However, it's not promising a lot since it resembles to precedent year at the level of um, um, uh, at the level of um, the emergency procedures. The only different scenario is that most educators and students have been vaccinated, so uh, everyone has got um, this shot, which encourages most institutions to opt for face-to-face -face schooling, but still, still 
nothing is clear. So we have both scenarios, whether online or on site. But things are um, given to each institution to decide whether they are going to have um, the face to face schooling or the on site schooling things are really different and we hope that things would really go back to the normal because we miss that normal well thank you very much for your attention here you can find some references that i resorted to in in my study um i hope that things are go going to be better in the future stay safe stay alive thank you very much Goodbye.